uh, local government owned kung mga barangay or uh, municipal roads. Pero meron na rin pra, uh, public spaces that are privately owned, like bars, like malls, like restaurants. So at the start, yun lang po na yung idea ng legislation na to. And then, um, we decided um, when it was moving forward in the House and in the Senate, sabi sa amin, why not just use the opportunity to also introduce much needed reforms in our sexual harassment law. So it was actually the Philippine Commission of Women that pushed us to do it kasi um, since the beginning of time, since yung um, old sexual harassment law, isa na sa mga critiques on that law is that it did not cover peer-to-peer -peer harassment. No? So and also perhaps more uh, less frequently no, yung subordinate to superior harassment. Yung logic nun ay uh, dun sa peer-to-peer -peer, ay kahit na wala kayong um, power, no? there is no power asymmetry between the two of you, the fact that you are of different genders, pero hindi um, uh, power dynamic na binibigay yung binipulan, no? yung society sa, sa men. No? And that's why peer-to-peer -peer harassment should also be punished in the workplace. Now, I was asked to give a presentation of the entire law. Um, so it's going to be that. No? I'm going to present the entire law. So yung street harassment, um, uh, public spaces harassment, schools harassment, and workplace harassment, and also online harassment. But perhaps in the open forum, we can discuss more deeply yung provisions on workplace harassment. And I, like, um, like what Sarah said, I'm really hoping for this to be an exchange because I'm also part of the IRR process and we really, really need to plug in yung mga concerns ng industry into, uh, in, in the uh, drafting of the IRR and very valuable yung insights from PMAP, no? Um, kung paano, uh, paano di ba ginagawa yung coding, di ba? How do you investigate reports of harassment, gano'n? How do you impose liabilities on employers? So, I hope we can have a rich discussion later. But in the meantime, um, since my topic officially is the safe spaces law, please allow me to go through the salient features of the law in its entirety. So, ano ba yung gender-based street and public spaces harassment? And again, I, another thing I want to also say at the start as a disclaimer, I Kagaya nga ng sinabi karina, we are still in the process of drafting the IRR. So the law just parang creates broad strokes on what offenses are punishable, ano yung mga rights na pwede sa mga biktima. But if you have very specific questions, I might not be able to answer them because they are still in the process of being discussed and deliberated at the level of the executive agency. Is it because they're going to go out of IRR? So, but gender-based street and public spaces harassment includes um, <coughs> catcalling, wolf whistling, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs, persistent uninvited comments or gestures on a person's appearance, relentless requests for personal details. Statement of sexual comments and suggestions, public masturbation or flashing of private parts, groping or any advances, whether verbal or physical. And this is the important point. No, it has to be any of those activities, and it has to be unwanted and threatens a person's sense of personal space and physical safety. So, and committed in public spaces such as alleys roads, sidewalks, parks, buildings, schools, churches, restaurants, malls, public washrooms, bars, internets, public mar markets, transportation terminals, or public utility um, vehicles. Actually, the list is so long because dumaan rin yan sa process of consultations. Eh. And then when we talk actually to some um, workers, no, uh, workers like ourselves, uh, and workers who um, commute, Sabi nila na, nako, kailangan yung ilagay yung transportation terminals. I wasn't there before, I said, pero apparently, and I didn't know this, grabe pala yung harassment sa mga 
uh, pila ng bus, sa mga terminal ng mga bicycles. So that's why it's exhaustive. So restaurants, um, cafes, bars and clubs, resorts and water parks, hotels, casinos, cinemas, malls, buildings, and other privately owned places open to the public, they are in a special category kasi hindi siya talaga purely public space eh. Um, because they are privately owned, no? So, ito mga malls, open to the public lang siya, but it is not a purely public place. And therefore, there are obligations that are imposed on private persons, yung may ari, no? So, the first is to adopt a zero-tolerance policy against gender-based streets and public spaces harassment, to provide assistance to victims, by coordinating with local police authority immediately after the harassment is reported if there is CCTV footage to make that available and to provide a safe and gender-sensitive environment to encourage victims to report sexual harassment at the first instance. Isa sa mga tanong during the consultations, what do you mean by safe, no? It can be very simple. It can be that if a woman Wants to report a harassment, uh, a case of harassment in a bar, sana kausap niya, babae din. No? So, so that it's more conducive to openness and to truth-telling. So, install in business establishments clearly visible warning signs against gender-based public spaces harassment, including the anti-sexual harassment hotline number in bold letters. Um, designate at least one sexual anti-sexual harassment officer. So this can be um, this, uh, a security guard. This does not require additional personnel. Um, but to designate one existing employee to receive um, gender-based sexual harassment complaints. And security guards can be deputized to apprehend perpetrators caught in the act. And they are required to immediately coordinate with them. So, gender-based sexual harassment in public utility vehicles. This um, also includes PNBS. Um, the LTO can cancel the license of perpetrators that have been found to commit acts constituting sexual harassment in public utility vehicles, and their franchise may um, also be suspended or revoked. As we speak, um, our office is working very closely with Grab and with AMCAS, um, so um, just to align them with the principles of the, of the legislation. So anti-sexual harassment enforcers, for gender-based street and public space of sexual harassment, the MMDA, um, in the case of Metro Manila, and local units of the PNP, in the um, in case of um, cities outside Manila, um, shall deputize its enforcers to be tinatawag namin ASHI or anti-sexual harassment officers. They are deputized to receive complaints on the street and immediately apprehend the perpetrator if caught in flagrante delito. What is the contemplated, what is the idea? Well, what did we contemplate here? We wanted catcalling, um, the first offense of catcalling to be on the same level as smoking in a non-smoking area or yung in the Clean Air Act, yung magkakalap ka ng basura, no? Kasi they're saying, why would, why, why would they apprehend agad, di ba? Violation yun ng due process. But if you think about it, um, pwede ko nga i-apprehend kung mag-smoke ka in a non-smoking uh, non area or kung magkakalap ka ng basura under the Clean Air Act. So we want, um, we want there to be, um, quick apprehension, kunwari, merong, let's say, some, some person, uh, a person on the street, um, yelling at the, at the, at the woman no, or a girl, and saying, hey, uh, sexy mo, ganyan, ganyan. Um, and then there is a police officer right away. That police officer should be able to immediately apprehend the perpetrator, no, without the um, girl having to go to a police station and, um, uh, kasi minsan, hindi tinutuloy kasi maha, masyadong ma-complicated yung process. So that's the point of that. Um, 
The perpetrator shall be immediately brought to the nearest PNP station to face charges. The AC, together with the women and children's desk of PNP, shall keep a ledger of perpetrators who have committed acts prohibited under this act for purposes of determining if he is a first-time, second-time, or third-time offender. Again, the PNP is still in the process of revising its rules and making new rules to accommodate uh, this new legislation. So, gender-based online sexual harassment. Gender-based online sexual harassment includes acts that use information and communications technology in terrorizing and intimidating victims through physical, psychological, and emotional threats, unwanted sexual, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and comments online, whether publicly or through direct and private messages, invasion of victims' privacy through cyberstalking and incessant messaging, Actually po, um, yung misogynistic and transphobic and homophobic and sexist remarks, it came from yung, um, yung mga online harassment and misogynistic, yung paparate kita, yung those comments that have been hurled upon. Um, this was, I don't know if it's coincidental, pero during the time that Marcos was um, going to be very uh, transferred in the Liga ng Mga Bayani and the uh, Millennials spoke out. Um, there were, they were, I don't know where it came from, but there was a barrage of misogynistic threats hurled at them, and uh, this was documented. So um, they really asked us to, to include it no, in our um, bill. So any unauthorized recording and sharing of any of the victim's photos, videos, or any information online, ito yung meld yung um, mga revenge for ito yung um, pastor pastor um po 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 ka po ka give ayo so like that yung nauso na nag-share ng mga um, nude photos of women uh, when they when they um uh when they broke up with their boyfriends um impersonating identities of victims online posting lies about victims to harm their reputation or filing false and use reports to online platform to silence victims. So those are the um, harassments uh, identified no, sa public spaces, sa online spaces, and sa um, uh, public spaces that are privately owned. However, in these three areas, we say that the penalty should be heavier if um, the, if the following facts are um, attend, attend the incident. No? So, for example, if number one, if the act takes place in a common carrier or a public utility vehicle, such as jeepneys, taxis, tricycles, or PNBS, where the perpetrator is the driver and the offended party is a passenger, so sabi natin, dapat mas mataas yung kalusa because the driver has control over the vehicle. The, victim is placed in a more vulnerable position because she or he is in an enclosed vehicle. If the offended party is a minor, and for obvious reasons, vulnerabilities, a senior citizen, and for obvious reasons, a person with disability, um, or a breastfeeding mother nursing her child. Honestly, yung breastfeeding mother nursing her child, ako personally yung nagsingit no? <laughs> because I was, um, I was in BGC and then um, uh, I was breastfeeding my child. There was no breastfeeding area that I could find. And then there was like somebody, a construction worker, <coughs> and I really feel, and Senator Lisa feels, that public breastfeeding should be an advocacy because that's what infants need. So um, harassment of mothers breastfeeding their, their child no, should uh, should really be given higher penalties. If the offended party is diagnosed with a mental problem tending to impair consent, again, this is because of the specific vulnerabilities of, um, of the party, of the uh, victim. If the perpetrator is a member of the uniformed services, such as the PNP and the AFP, and the act was perpetrated while the perpetrator was in uniform, of course, if you're in uniform, 
it has a more chilling effect on the victim. It's much harder to complain. It's much harder to ask for help. No, you are in a very clear position of authority. And lastly, if the act takes place in the premises of a government agency offering frontline services to the public and the perpetrator is a government employee, for example, kukuha ka ng SSSI, kukuha ka ng or or mga four-piece, no? Kukuha ng four-piece and then the harasser was someone, was a government employee Um, delivering these services, tapos siya yung nanghanas, there should be higher penalties. So, sexual harassment in schools, all schools, no, and this is whether private or public, should designate an officer in charge to receive complaints regarding violations of this act. And should ensure that the victims are provided with a gender-sensitive environment that is respectful to their needs and conducive to truth-telling. So every school must adopt and publish grievance procedures to facilitate the filing of complaints by students and faculty members. And this is, the next part is something that I want to flag. Even if an individual does not want to file a complaint or does not request that the school take any action on behalf of a student, but the school authorities have knowledge or reasonably know about a possible or impending act of gender-based sexual harassment or sexual violence, it is the obligation of the school to promptly investigate. And this was a result of parang studies and focus group discussions saying that when students are bullied, uh, they really don't want to come out. They, really, uh, they prefer to suffer in silence rather than report to the authorities and have their... Um, Uh, oppressions um, displayed before the entire school. So we're saying that if there is evidence or if it looks like harassment is going on in the school, kahit na hindi nag-report yung estudyante or kahit na ayaw mag-report ng estudyante, the school should promptly investigate. And um, they should take immediate action to eliminate the same acts and prevent their recurrence and address their effects. So right now, the um, CHED is working very hard to see how they can um, in incorporate these um, innovations uh, in their policies. So ito po yung mga first degree offenses, no? So, Cursing, cat calling, wolf whistling, leering, and intrusive gazing, taunting, unwanted invitations, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist slurs, unwanted comments for one's appearance, the unrelentless request for personal details, sex, all jokes, use of words, gestures, or actions, the ridicule on the basis of sex. Uh, use of sexual names, comments, no? So basically, ito yung walang, walang touching, no? No touching of the victim. Parang all, parang verbal or gestures na perpetrator. The penalties ay 1,000 pesos na fine. Ito yung parang uh, ka-equal no? parang nag ka in a public space, no? So you are immediately imposed a fine of 1,000 pesos and a 12-hour community service with gender sensitivity seminar. Pag second offense mo na, the fine is a bit higher, it's 3,000 pesos, and you already get to spend 6 to 10 days in prison. Pag third offense mo na, which means you're already a habitual offender, you spend 11 to 30 days in prison, and you're imposed a 10,000 um, peso fine. The second degree offenses, ito yung offensive body gestures, it already includes public masturbation, flashing of private parts, groping, and similar lewd actions. So, the first offense is 10,000 and may 12-hour community service. The second offense is 11 to 30 days and the third of and 15,000 pesos. And the third offense is one month to 6 months and 20,000 fine. So, parang kung yung first, yung verbal and get gestures dito, parang you already um, display your private parts, you already um, 
And the third is the most serious, no? So this includes already stalking, um, sexual advances, um, gestures and statements, everything mentioned in the first and the second uh, offense, if it includes any form of pinching or brushing against the body of the offended person. And then even without um, the sexual advances, gestures, and statements, if you touch private areas such as the genitalia, face, arms, anus, groin, breast, inner thighs, face, buttocks, or any part of the victim's body, then you get these um, uh, these penalties. Medyo matas na 11 to 30 days in prison, 30,000 fine, and then second offense, one month, six months in prison with a 50,000 fine. Third offense is four months, six months with a 100,000 fine. For online harassment, um, it's 100,000 uh, pesos, do not more than 500,000 pesos, and it's one month to six months. Um, why is it so big? It's so big because um, when you when, diba, when you touch someone or you um, call out to someone, when you cat call or you wolf whistle, after you do it, wala na eh, diba? There's no more case. But in online harassment, if you upload a photo of a naked woman, the photo stays there um, in, the, in, uh, in cyberspace. So that's why the legislators contemplated a higher offense because the repercussions are more permanent on the victim. So workplace harassment po. Only, I only have two slides for this because it's actually a very small part of the entire law. No? But the most important part of the workplace or of the portion of the workplace harassment is the, is the proviso saying that the crime of gender-based sexual harassment may also be committed between peers and those committed to a superior officer by a subordinate, to a teacher by a student, or to a trainer by a trainee. So it removes already yung the requirement that it is a, a superior or it is a supervisor that does the harassment um, on the subordinate. Now, there is also an important distinction, distinction between the old law and the new law. Because in the old law, sexual harassment in the workplace occurs when sexual favors are solicited in exchange for favorable employment conditions and refusal to do so results in adverse working conditions. In schools naman, it occurs when sexual favors are solicited in exchange for a passing grade or um, honors or scholarships. So the main distinction is that under the old law, kailangan may kapalit, no? You have to prove that you were a sexual favor was asked of the victim um, in exchange for something. No? Under um, the, the under the new law, sexual harassment already occurs when the perpetrator gives unwanted, unwelcome, and uninvited sexual remarks that threatens the victim's sense of personal space and safety. So the moment that your personal safety and your personal space is threatened by a colleague, you know, it can be a colleague, it can be a supervisor, it can be a rank and file staff, you know, just as long as it's in the world of work, then you can already, already have grounds to bring forth a, a case for sexual harassment. But the employer's liabilities are quite similar, no? May konti lang pagkakaiba. For example, under the, uh, the new law, the employer also has the responsibility to disseminate copies of the guidelines to the staff. It can be done naman by the HR, no? And um, to form a grievance mechanism similar to a code D, no? Um, and that Cody should be uh, and that Cody dapat represented on um, uh, 
uh, yung rank and file, yung um, supervise, uh, supervisory staff ko merong union, and of course from the company. So the procedure is more or less the same. <coughs> Under the old law, kasi solid, uh, may solidary liability yung, uh, is that, that's right, no? may solidary liability yung employer um, uh, doon sa sexual harassment that takes place. Under the new law, um, if an employer or a uh, superior knows that a sexual harassment has occurred and did not do anything, or uh, did not act upon um, the complaint by the victim, then the employer will also be liable. I think it's around 5,000 to 15,000 pesos. Actually, it's not so um, large. Um, so, that's the end of my presentation. And I'm happy to discuss any more specific questions on workplace harassment or, or any part. Questions? Anyone can raise their questions. Screenshot 
of those comments? Is it still punishable by law? Of course, of course it's still punishable because it's the act then. Diba? It's the, um, yes. so even naman for our cyber crime laws, eh, even if you take it down, uh, uh, you can still charge, no? especially if you have the evidence that you took screenshots. So it doesn't fall under workplace harassment anymore. It, fa it falls under parang online harassment because uh, even a uh, former employee. Na. But it, it doesn't matter. Kahit pinake down niya, if, if, if you post someone's like, nude photo online, I mean, if you took it down, the buyer is still liable because you still expose the victim to You can still be her vulnerable. She, it's still a criminal act. Just that it's not, it will not be considered a uh, um, continuing offense. So, so that means, parang if there is a period within which to bring someone, that period will probably be counted from the time it was online. Because if you remember what they did sa Rappler kay Maria Ressa, they said it was a continuing offense because Rappler did not take down. So kahit parang 10 years ko siya, sabi parang okay pa rin because you never took it down. So that's the only effect. Space is very subjective and it depends on one person to another. So, how do you plan to address this subjectivity in the IMR part? You, kahit naman yung ano eh, di ba? For, kahit naman the other provisions in our revised penal code, it also depends on what the victim feels. For example, we have provisions on unjust vexation, di ba? If you're not vexed, <laughs> then you don't bring suit, no? So if you feel that your personal space is being violated, it's not the violation of personal space, ha? it's the commission of ABCDE acts within a, and, and the, the commission of, of which violates your personal space. So para you cannot, I cannot say that, sir, you violate my personal space. Um, just just because you know you're standing there, you, know, you have to commit other acts, and um, that's you can make that kind of allegation. And of course, the courts are free to rule um, if your uh, if your allegations have basis. <laughs> Actually, the ant is the happy in our Islamic industry. Okay. Just wanted to ask in terms of the security agencies, for example. What security agency the free skin? Free skin for separate their problem. Then like the club with power. Will that be on the premise of Sunday? We're just doing our job. Another question for those industries in the man that comes out. Mm -hmm. so, you can't call it, etc. But then again, you have to understand the kind of job or the kind of work that they are doing. Mm -hmm. so, will that fall Then, if, uh, if, uh, if a person is frisked by a guard and the guard says that she is just doing her duty, then that's a defense. no? And it's up to the, to the um, person that is... Um, determining whether it be the courts or whether it be the AC if it's at the first instance um, to say kung valid ba yung defense kasi parang lagi naman karanasan naman na ng buhay natin dito sa Pilipinas yung frisking no? so parang ngayon so alam naman na natin kung ano yung frisking na parang legit diba? tsaka ano yung frisking na parang medyo tumatagal na um, 
So uh, again, um, that's a matter of defense, and it's the it's a matter for the courts to adjudicate the evidence. Sa question of beer house, I mean, it's the same thing, no? Um, ako, my personal belief as a feminist is that it's possible for, diba, diba, there's this age-old question, can prostitutes be raped, diba? Of course they can, no? Because consent is given on a case-to-case -case basis, diba? You negotiate consent at every instance, no? So, in a beer house, if a woman who works there feels that she is um, being catcalled or um, there, there's wolf whistling or she's made to feel unsafe, um, she can um, by all means file a complaint, diba? And it's up to the, to the courts to adjudicate if her claim is correct. Honestly, I don't think in, this, in the society that we have that her claim will prosper. Um, but like anybody, like any party, like any party litigant, um, a person who works in a beer house, a prostituted woman, is free to bring whatever um, claim they want. Bahala na lang yung, ano, yung hoes to make a determination based on the facts. I think it's possible for a woman who works in a beer house to be stopped, for example. Diba? also share um, personal experiences on how you handle um, uh, cases of sexual harassment in your companies or in your industries because I'm also here to do this and, and to get inputs for the IRR. laws in general, all our criminal laws are territorial. So that means that um, basta may, may offense na committed in Philippine territory, anybody can be prosecuted, foreigners or not. No. So the, the short answer is you can bring, uh, bring a, a criminal case against a foreigner. Baka mas mahirap lang yung, kung hindi siya mapakulong, mas mahirap lang yung process because um, ali, ali so there are logistical challenges, I suppose, but legally you can bring a case against the foreigner. <laughs> and there are many. Attorney, um, it stated, I think, uh, Article 4, Section C. Create an independent internal mechanism or a committee on decorum and an investigation to investigate and address complaints of gender-based sexual harassment, which shall adequately represent the management, the employees from the supervisory rank, the rank and file employees, and the union, if any, then designate a woman as its head and not less than half of its members should be women. So, ano ba? Um, for every case, merong parang different committee. Kasi what, uh, I'm not so sure. Kasi in the previous um, forum that I attended, one of the participants um, representing one company said that um, yung committee nila is composed of uh, the HR head. So ang tanong namin is, what if yung offender is the HR head? <laughs> so yun. So, uh, which follows na my, my question is for every case um, or complaint ba na in elevate sa management um, kailangan bang mag-form ng different committee? I think it largely depends on the discretion na of the company. I mean, obviously um, kung yung Cody 
yung head niya, yung HR head. Tapos, in one particular case, yung HR head, yung may kasalanan. Then, of course, uh, management has to form a parang ad hoc, di ba, committee um, where the HR head has no participation. So, parang gano'n. I think that um, uh, our companies just have to try their best to comply, no, with the requirement of having uh, female membership, no? So, kunwari, uh, especially if it's a female complaining, uh, kasi there are statistics and studies that demonstrate that uh, mas, ma, it's easier for women to uh, express and to uh, and to communicate when they're talking to a fellow woman. And I think that's the uh, rationale behind the provision. Thank you. Any questions from the group here? Any suggestions, comments, insights? Questions, insights we can get from the room. Hi, Attorney. Just want to clarify. Uh, would the client will be liable if in case the concerned group is uh, both uh, third party or other agency? Will a client will be liable if in case the involved parties is other agencies? For example, housekeeping and security. Okay. Then, uh, do we need to so do manpower agency, agency? Manpower agency. Manpower agency. Tapos? Uh, they are the involved persons. Then we as a client, do we need to interfere or do uh, any... Uh, you're the client. See, uh, like hire from the manpower. Yes, and, um, the, and the... Involved group is your agencies. Parang we received the report that there's a, a harassment. Where did the harassment take place? In the agency or in, in your building, company? In the company. Ah, in your company. Between two individuals who were both recruited from the agency. Yes. Ah, okay. I think it's in that case, it's reasonable for the... I think the... It is my legal opinion that's not in the law. I think the company has an obligation to endorse the complaint to the agency, but I think the legal obligation to act on the complaint lies with the employers of the of the two parties. So, you two parties galing sa agent? Two separate agencies. Two separate agencies. Ah, okay. Para si Leila po. I think if it's one agency, actually this is tricky, yeah, I'm just, because um, this is uh, this is not in the law. So I think that if it's one agency, that means it's one employer um, for the two parties, baka we can are, there's an argument that can be made for that one agency to um, handle the coding for the two of them. However, if it's two different agencies, so parang housekeeping and security, tapos yung security guard, pero hinalas yung housekeeping, no? The law also puts um, employer and parang person in charge and person uh, with moral ascendancy. So I think that um, because of that provision, the victim can rightly call upon the, the company, the, the client, to uh, to at least um, maybe just hear hear the case um, and then make a recommendation to the employer of the perpetrator as to the um, penalties. Do we need to interview in some way? I think so because it's two different agencies. If you don't intervene, then how will the police respond? Thank you. I'm sorry, last question for me. Ma'am, uh, does the law contemplate situations where the sexual harasser is a woman, uh, and a man, and the victim is a man also? 
Attorney question na po, if ever po ba yung um, yung magkukomit po ng offense, I, I mean, meron po bang expiration date po yun? For example, yung meron pong relationship po yung supervisor and the, ano, the subordinates. So, good term sila, and then suddenly nagkaroon sila ng pag-aaway, then dahil may pag-aaway doon, yung babae nag-commit na para masiraan yung supervisor. Their relationship is a, a defense, di ba? It's a defense of consent. Di ba? While the relationship was on, but kasi binibigay, ganun naman rin, even in rape then, di ba? You can prove um, that it was a consensual sexual act um, by proving that it was part of a relationship. So, same. Pero attorney, for example, nangyari siya ng January, tapos by June, dahil may fear po yung babae, by June siya nagreklamo. Valid pa rin po yun kahit January Oo. siya nangyari. Pero ng January, uh, may relasyon sila. Hindi po, parang siguro natatakot lang po siya na magsabi. Pero <laughs> okay. valid pa rin siya. Thank you po.
Yeah. That just means you can proceed with company procedures on how you dealt with sexual harassment before, yeah. but yeah. now you you have to accept complaints but fear but fear against fear you know, that Basically, 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 basically,
So, hindi siya natanggap, gano'n? So, or anong nangyari after the interview? Kasi pag natanggap siya, pwedeng... Actually, no, actually, it's an interesting question to be resolved by the courts because the law is silent. But in any case, kung hindi siya mag-fall under workplace harassment, that should be covered under um, the safe spaces law in general. This is an actual case which okay. I had with Okay. And how uh, did you The start? area manager, uh, our area manager was interviewing an applicant. And one of uh, the comments he made on the applicant is that you are too pretty to be single. Yung kumbaga, uh, kumbaga mga parang sa ganda niya, sa ganda mong niya, single ka pa rin. Yeah. Uh, the, the applicant reported but did, she did not push through with the, with the, with her application. The good part of that, the good thing on the part of the, of our company is this area manager had previous cases, so would, it was easier for us to decide on this case that it may be Para miskandak. Pero what if the offense was the first time and the applicant did not push through with her employment? She did not push through with her, so parang she didn't push. She was going to be accepted, but she didn't push through. I think maybe it can already be. Uh, covered by workplace, but it's it's complicated eh, kasi it requires an employer relationship eh, di ba, to investigate. So how can you investigate two parties when you're not the employer of one? Because applicant ka lang. The employer, the employer has no responsibility to conduct it. I think the employer has a responsibility to conduct in an investigation on the misconduct of um, of his employee, but it will not activate the yung creation of a parang code. Tapos you to get the two parties to talk, ganon, parang ganon. So we handle it as a misconduct. I would think so, oo. because uh, because the uh, the element of employer employee relationship with respect to one party is absent. So I guess, yes, one last question. Um, follow up question. In relation to in relation to his question, uh and you say it's the applicant and the interviewer. What if it's an a trainee or an OGT? Coverage. Coverage. Covered. Okay, thank you. So I guess we're all set for the questions. If shall we give it or I yard say yes sir? Well attorney have a last question. Uh, right now we have an unemployed we have a contracted staff. Uh, it's a person with a business. Sometimes we observe that uh yes the gestures na possible can Yes. So, how, how will be the handling for that? Then I think you should see it as a mitigating circumstance. Then you look at intent, diba? If how If he does it to everybody, you know, without regard for parang yung the gender of the person he does it to, matanda o bata, uh, baka naman innocent. No? I think if you look at the totality of the circumstances, then you can come to a decision on whether the act was malicious or not. Pero kunwari, ginagawa niya yung gesture only to one particular person, di ba? And that person already feels uncomfortable. Baka medyo parang problematic. Uh, another question. Can an employee file an incident to security if lagi siyang pinag... Lagi siyang ino good morning? <laughs> we actually receive a complaint on that. Okay. Na masyadong... Did you get the card and then you can see it. Can you tell me? Face to face basis, right? Of course. Because in the Senate, the security guard always says good morning. At our meeting, it's like that. But it's not a problem. I think it depends also on if he 
recognize that to everybody. But even outside, pag nasa lawa siya, kasi with uh, the, com the complaint that actually sent us a report na parang she feel harassed. Every time uh, she saw the door, lagi siyang... Good morning. Saka with, ano, with name pa. With uh, parang first name. But everybody English. else parang ano, help me out. Because uh, honestly, in my opinion, parang I don't really see how it can uh, create a case for sexual harassment. So, hindi ko alam. I don't know. Of course, for others, uh, we actually asked her if uh, you feel harassed ba? And then yung guard, ang uh, sabi naman yung guard, he has no intention to intimidate or to harass. But for the girls, kaya medyo um, tricky itong sex cases, yung sexual harassment. Especially for guys, kung masyado pa ang babaet or nagalang, pwede ko interpret, ma-interpret na. Oh, pero hindi siya nag- hindi siya, hindi, hindi, wait ah, let's just be clear ah, it's not enough that you feel unsafe ha, it's a combination of specific acts plus feeling unsafe. So, yung, sa tingin ko, yung good morning, kung wala siya sa cat calling, wolf whistling, gano'n, persistent asking of, ano, personal information, wala naman doon na ano eh, persistent greeting niya, di ba? So, it's mine, yeah. Well, it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, guys. I don't know. I don't know. I Siguro, I'm sure, ayaw naman na mawala ng trabaho, di ba? Siguro, pwede na sabihin na manalang nagre-reklamo. Pero yung employee can file? The employee, anybody can always file. It, it depends on how the, if the case will be adjudicated. Pero home office mate, nagpapadeliver siya ng yung mga diet delivery food. So, napupunta sa guard. Yung mga, ano, mga sexy chef, gano'n. Sabi ng guard sa kanya, Oh, hindi, hindi, hindi mo na kailangan ng diet food. Sexy mo na, ganyan. Diba? So, mga gray areas yan eh, no? For the guard, it might just be a compliment. But for um, the woman hearing it, it might be offensive. So, and I think, if it's um, innocently said, um, kunwari feeling talaga ng guard na wala talaga masama sa good morning. Pag sinabi mo naman sa isang tao na nagsabi innocently to, to just stop it, no, I pitigil naman yun, di ba? 